What makes muscles waste away? Muscle wasting is a loss of muscle mass due to the muscles weakening and shrinking. Various factors contribute to muscle wasting, including malnutrition, sedentarism, some neurological diseases, prolonged illness and or hospitalization, and swallowing problems. Find out how to prevent or reverse muscle atrophy now. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We love being with you today. I hope you are doing marvelous. I'm doing fantastic. I hope you are doing as fantastic as I am. And if you are, go grab a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Before I get into the new beauty of today's conversation, I want to uh, give a shout out to uh, some of our viewers and listeners in the United States and Canada, particularly Louis Walsh in Bolivar, Mississippi, Jaden Wright in Congo, Mississippi, and Daisy Cunningham in Bailey, Mississippi. Now, today's topic is very simple. What makes muscles waste away? Now, let's first define muscle atrophy. So when people talk about you know, muscles waste away, they are actually talking about muscle atrophy. So muscle atrophy is is generally caused by a lack of physical activity. Now that lack of physical activity, that sedentarism can be caused by a lot of things, right? It can be caused if you're sick or you have some issues where you can't move, you know, the muscles start start eating themselves away, they start weakening, they start shrinking, right? It's, it's the whole thing about use it or lose it, right? So when a disease or injury makes it complicated or impossible for you to move a leg, an arm, that lack, as I said earlier, the lack of mobility can result in muscle wasting. Now, over time, I'm talking a few months, years down the road, without regular movement, your leg or arm can start to appear smaller but not shorter than the one you are able to move, right? Now, the thing here is that in some very rare cases, research has shown that muscle wasting can be reversed with the proper diet, exercise, or physical therapy. Now, I will talk about that in the uh, in the uh, other sections of today's show, all right? Now, so we, so we fully understand the definition now of muscle atrophy. Let's move on now to the symptoms. What are the symptoms of muscle atrophy? Now, folks, uh, if you just join us, I just want to quickly, uh, just want to quickly uh, mention that to, this show is not about giving medical advice. We are a general information show. We provide general information. If you want more information about your particular, your particular situation, your particular circumstance, your particular body, please consult a healthcare practitioner. Talk to your doctor to have more information, all right? So the symptoms of muscle atrophy I'm talking about here are the general symptoms as they, as they have been uh, described, as they have been indicated by the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, right? The CDC. So you might have muscle atrophy if one of your arms or legs is noticeably smaller than the other, right? If you experience important weakness in one limb if you've been physically inactive for a very long time either due to disease or to lifestyle you know whatever it is if you've been physically inactive for a a very long time you might feel some kind of lethargy in your muscles right so if you have one of those three things it's very important as i said earlier to schedule a complete medical examination you know you with your doctor and you are and, and you want to from there and on listen to your doctor's tips and advice as to how to remedy the situation all right the thing here is that sometimes you might have an undiagnosed condition that requires treatment that is causing you to show signs of muscle atrophy right so in all cases it's always important to prevent than to treat so prevention always is better i'll be right back right after this don't go away. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We still continue our conversation around muscle at- muscle atrophy. If you just joined the show, please consider subscribing to our channel. If you like the content we are sharing with you, 
consider subscribing turn on the notification bell so you are kept aware of new shows share like comment below and uh, let us know what you think about today's topic all right i want to if you if you want us to give you a shout out during our show again you know what you you know what you know the deal right comment share like subscribe we want to quickly acknowledge our viewers uh, from new mexico we have scott jordan pleasant hill new mexico k webb bayer new mexico and shannon hussein from pueblo of sandia or pueblo of sandia village that's in new mexico beautiful name for for a city pueblo of sandia village all right what are the causes of muscle atrophy now the thing you have to understand here is that unused muscles can waste away and i've said it before if you're not active this happens right now after the atrophy starts after the atrophy kicks up you can reverse this type of atrophy you can reverse it with exercise and improved nutrition right so diet and exercise now muscle atrophy can also happen if you are if you've been bedridden or unable to move certain parts of the body due to a medical condition right now it's not even a medical con condition because research has shown also that astronauts for example they can experience muscle atrophy after a few days of weightlessness only a few days think about it only a few days right so uh, here are the causes for uh, muscle atrophy you have um, stroke, uh, spinal cord or uh, peripheral nerve injuries, lack of physical activity for an extended period of time, aging, burns, injuries such as torn or uh, rotator cutoff, cuff or broken bones, for instance. Long-term, long-term therapy for certain conditions. If you have uh, malnutrition, also this could be a cause for a cause of muscle atrophy. Now the thing here is that some medical conditions can cause muscles to waste away, or they can they can just outright make movement difficult. And of course, and if, if the patient is not moving, he or she will gradually get muscle atrophy, right? And here are some of the um, those medical conditions. You have something called ALS, so that's the lateral. So this MU trophic lateral sclerosis right this is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease this particular condition affects the nerve cells that control voluntary muscle movements you have dermatomyositis that causes muscle weakness and skin rash of course you have MS the, the one that we uh, a lot of folks know about unfortunately that affects again hundreds of thousands of Americans you, you know multiple sclerosis which is an, an autoimmune condition in which the body destroys the protective coverings of nerves you have a uh, neuropathy and this is the damage to a nerve or nerve group right and this res results in loss of sensation or functions polio of course which is a viral disease that affects muscle tissue and of course unfortunately in this case this can lead to a par paralysis we have a polymyositis, which is an inflammatory, inflammatory disease. You have a spinal muscular atrophy, and this is a genetic, this is a hereditary condition that causes legs and arm muscles to waste away. You have, uh, you also have um, another disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome. This is an autoimmune condition that leads to nerve inflammation and muscle weaknesses so there are my point here is that there are a series of there is a series of diseases that causes that cause muscles to waste away or rather just make movement difficult right so besides basic factors such as aging you know the consumption of alcohol malnutrition and so on and so forth you also have some maladies that cause muscle atrophy i'll be right back right after this don't go anywhere welcome back folks to another edition of sweetie kiwi we're still having a conversation today about muscle muscle wasting muscles wasting away and i want to quickly give um, a shout out to um, our viewers and listeners in the east coast of the united states of america we have michael wallace in kensington new york jackie brooks in hortonsville new york 
and Layla George in Dundee, New York. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate that. We want to talk now about the diagnosis of muscle atrophy. Now, the thing here is that if you, if someone has muscle atrophy and the cause is dip, it's not malnutrition or is not some kind of, um, you know, some kind of lack of movement, if it is a disease, then you then the person needs to undergo testing to diagnose the condition, right? So usually the healthcare practitioner will request a complete medical history, right? So the, I mean, for instance, if some, you know, if you have this kind of a muscle atrophy, the, you know, the doctor during the diagnosis may ask you about old or recent injuries or previously diagnosed medical conditions. The, the doctor can ask you, you know whatever supplements you're taking if you're taking any over over the counter medication or prescriptions and um, the the doctor will give you also a detailed prescriptions of um, will ask you rather to give a detailed prescriptions of your symptoms the thing here is that to diagnose muscle atrophy uh, science is pretty is pretty advanced nowadays and uh, you know the healthcare practitioner will use a battery of tests to diagnose this including emg that's electromyography right so you have a muscle or nerve biopsy blood test you know blood your blood work is very key here x-rays of course uh mri so that's magnetic resonance imaging right of course ct scan right uh, and uh there's something called also nerve conduction studies so the thing here is that once you are, once you have some kind of pain or, or once you feel that you want, that your muscles are wasting away and you go through this battery of tests, your healthcare specialist may refer you to another expert, right? And this will t t totally depends on, on the results of this test. The, the most important thing to remember here is that every condition is different and every individual is different. Right, so you can have people who are sedentary for say six months and not have any kind of muscle wasting, whereas you have people who are just sedentary for three months and they start feeling lethargic, they start feeling some muscle atrophy. Right, you, you kind of have also some uh, element of genetics that goes into play here. So, again, I said it before, I'm saying this again please contact your uh, healthcare specialist. If you want to have more info, this show is not where we don't provide medical advice. We are a general information show. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go. <laughs> Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We're still continuing our conversation around um, what makes muscles waste away. And, uh, you know, today's show, I kind of explain now, muscle atrophy, of course, muscle wasting is a loss of muscle mass due to the muscles weakening and shrinking, right? So various factors contribute to muscle wasting. And in today's show, we're trying to prevent and reverse, prevent or reverse muscle atrophy. So I explained to you what muscle atrophy is, the symptoms of muscle atrophy, the causes of muscle atrophy, we also talked about the diagnosis of muscle atrophy. Now we want to talk about the treatment of muscle atrophy, right? Before I do this, let me quickly give a shout out to um, some um, viewers and listeners in Canada. We have Rory Rogers in Prince George, this, this, this British Columbia, Canada. Alex Bork Barrett, Chilliwack, British Columbia. And Georgia Davis in Pennington. Again, in the beautiful province of British Columbia. So, Rory Rogers, Alex Barrett, and Georgia Davis, thank you so much for your support all the way from British Columbia in Canada. Now, to talk about treatment of muscle atrophy, you have to consider each individual case, right? So, because it's all about the diagnosis and the severity of the muscle loss, right? And on top of that, any underlying medical conditions must be taken into account. Now, common treatments for muscle atrophy include things like exercise, of course, right? You have to be, the person has to be fit. The patient has to be fit. Dietary changes, that's, that's for sure. 
if you have advanced muscle atrophy, surgery might be necessary. Ultrasound therapy is important, is another treatment of muscle atrophy. And physical therapy, right? Now, when it comes to exercise, uh, specialists recommend exercises as varied as water exercise and slow motion exercise. Slow mo, you know, uh, aqua gym is pretty good, right? A uh, physical therapist can teach you the correct ways, the correct ways to exercise, especially when it comes to moving your legs and arms. If you know you want to go through a physical therapist, you want to use the expertise of a physical therapist to know the right way. Now, ultrasound therapy is pretty good because it's non-invasive and it, u- it uses sound waves to help you heal. Right. Another thing that uh, that you have to you have to think about is that surgery is necessary if the patient needs to correct contracture deformity, right? It, especially if the muscle atrophy is due to malnutrition, all right? Because in that case, you have the what you have here is that the ten, the patient's tendons, ligaments, skin, or muscles are too tight, and they prevent him or her from moving. All right. So now if malnutrition, if a poor diet is the cause of muscle atrophy, your doctor may suggest dietary changes or supplements. All right. And this is very, 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 very important. Now, this is it, folks. So to wrap up today's conversation, we talked in this show about five things. Definition of muscle atrophy, symptoms of muscle atrophy, causes of muscle atrophy, diagnosis of muscle atrophy and treatment of muscle atrophy to wrap this up here is today's pro tip now it is very important that there are two things two factors that are very important when it comes to muscle atrophy number one age number two sleep so no matter how often you go to the gym no matter how fit you are you need to consider the fact that aging can cause muscle loss and that's called sarcopenia sarcopenia is is the muscle loss due to aging this usually kicks in around age 20 this is why it's important to to have some kind of physical activity right so the rate of sarcopenia picks up as we age so by by the time we get to age 50 a person can lose 0.4 pounds of muscle every single year which is a lot so to counter, to counter that, you have to exercise. The, the other thing you have to think about is sleep, right? If you have a sleep debt, you are actually endangering your body because sleep debt decreases the, the rate at which the body builds and repairs muscle. So skipping sleep to hit the weight room can neutralize results. Actually, you might want to check another show that we've done on, on muscle growth, right? Hypertrophy. So you want to really check that out because it's very important to always sleep. Okay? Thank you for listening to us and I will see you next time. Remember to be marvelous.